Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie Pearson. I'm from Grimshaw Architects and it's a great pleasure to be here today to present um, this project, Arta. It's a modern art gallery in Istanbul. Um, it's also a great pleasure to see uh, Grimshaw projects so well represented on the awards last night with the Elizabeth Line. Um, but yeah, today I'm going to be presenting this. Um, this building is uh, for the Vebi Koch Foundation. Um, it's a sort of um, a modern art museum for the, for the foundation uh, set on the uh, northern side of the Golden Horn in Istanbul. Uh, I'm going to talk about the facade later, but I just wanted to take you through a little bit about the building. Um, it's important to understand what's going on underneath the facade to, to show what architecturally we were trying to, to, to convey in, in the design. So the, the project's genesis came about um, as the client kind of grew out of their existing um, uh, existing facility on this Diklal in the centre of the city. Um, it had this amazing kind of shop front window, um, so we were keen to kind of bring this element into the new building, uh, which was which was pushed further out to the north of the city. Um, this is a, a building that's sort of in between three other kind of key public realm areas. So we were keen that the building was very open and accessible and welcoming to people to draw in new audiences across the city. So to mirror the old building, we have this kind of shop front window that draws you in and is very accessible and connects you from the street uh, across a level change into the park to the rear of the building. It's a building that is a bit of an iceberg. You know, there's a, there's, there is a piece above ground, but actually it descends a lot into the basement. Um, the upper floors are really uh, are sort of cycling around these gallery spaces uh, with offices right at the top, and then the performance spaces are in the basement. And that really started to define how the facade would work on these upper, upper elements. Um, but this sort of lifted volume above was very much where the GRC came into force. So as you enter the building, you come through this series of very open and transparent spaces that connect you up and through to the park. And then you process up into these gallery volumes, which are, you know, by their nature, need to be very much light controlled. Uh, there's moments when you connect out to the city and you get views um, to, to, the, to the context. But you then cycle up into this upper atrium and these galleries interlock and connect between, between different areas of the building. Again, these more um, set away spaces where we start to introduce this veiled element of the facade to, to control light in, but sometimes we want these views directly out of the building. There are upper chambers in these galleries which process up and up, and then right up to the rooftop where we come to the sort of final part of the building, which is an, an external terrace. We start to have that freestanding GRC element around the outside. So to take you through the, the facade, um, the sort of architectural intent was really around how we could create a, a facade which had a texture and a, a modelling to it, which gave some relief to what is otherwise a very kind of solid and uh, opaque facade. We took a lot of reference from the um, sort of the local vernacular; these very sculpted, three-dimensional forms, tessellating surfaces that are so prevalent within the city, and give such richness to, to the buildings of that of that area. But also the the um, the sort of inlay ceramic work, which is incredibly detailed and really kind of interesting patterns and, and allows this sort of element of reflection against those more matte surfaces. So for us as architects, the, the game was how do we inject these ideas into what is a very modern facade um, and develop a, a, a pattern that is kind of um, the signature of the building. So we started off with this, this module, this trapezoidal form that could be kind of turned and spun in different directions, sometimes concave, sometimes convex, to create a variety of, of um, texture and relief on the surface, which would interact with the light and the shadow cast across it in very different ways. Some sort of early intent views from the, from the CGIs were around um, how we could change between those very solid elements that cloak the gallery forms and then those more veiled elements uh, around the sort of library areas and the breakout spaces to, to let some light in there but control it to a degree. So that set up these three kind of key different, different solutions. So the very solid uh, GRC pieces, um, that idea of it being quite a monolithic structure, so where it does re return it becomes these kind of quite sharp, flat um, angles. Uh, these veil elements which are uh, fixed on a steel backing um, which, which flow in front of the, the glazed uh, library forms 
and then that upper freestanding sculpture terrace, which we wanted to be as transparent and open to the city as possible. Our actual, our actual start point as architects was to look at a, a ceramic solution. We wanted to kind of look at it as a tiled element, sort of very manual and crafted and, and, and hung one piece at a time. It was a very sort of romantic notion uh, for, for an architect. And when you look at the sort of scale of this building, actually it demanded a, a, a GFRC solution, which, um, which Benny Cohen from uh, Fibre Beton was really helpful in, in sort of ensuring that you could, you could get that intent of the look that we wanted, but with a, with a GRC um, so solution. So the game was really how do we create a, something that looks like it's tiled, single hung, but actually it's created in these larger panels uh, and, and fused together. So here we did a lot of work at the factory, um, working together with that team, taking our kind of prototype drawings and models from you know, desktop studies in, in the London office, um, working with the team at Fibre Beton to, to develop up initial prototypes, a lot of back and forth about the joint size, how we could make that, you know, the fake joint effectively look like the, the real joint, um, and then working it onto the site prototypes where we were testing all the different um, uh, modules and typologies uh, in that convex and concave form. And ultimately the the sort of GRC element is, is that very kind of clean, crisp, um, diamond form. Uh, some of the faces are sandblasted and others are polished, so you get that, again, a bit more variety across the, the surface. And then this smaller tile is a cast-in, um, inlaid ceramic pearlescent tile, which starts to give that sort of slight um, uh, you know, colour to the facade at certain times of day when the, the light passes over it. So we, um, we spent a long time working out whether we would use a kind of a, a very small module, um, these kind of smaller tiles, or actually look to kind of hang much bigger pieces, which was more efficient in terms of fixing back to the structural frame. Um, some of these panels are up to sort of five meters, sometimes six meters in, in length. Um, and obviously the corners become a very uh, challenging piece, so they actually tooth together around that, that corner to get that effect and that architectural crispness on the corner um, as, you, as you turn across each edge. And none of the angles there are 90 degrees. They're all slightly off. So a real challenge for the, for the, for the team uh, in Istanbul to, to, to sort that. But the overall effect is one of um, you know, great variety as, as light casts across that face. The color starts to come through from the, the pearlescent tiles. Um, and that sort of ge geometry and relief on the surface creates a lot of uh, variety throughout the day uh, and at different times. Um, so, you know, really impressive effect uh, from our initial intent uh, for the team to, to develop that and, and deliver on it. And the building, I think, although it is quite sort of alien to its context, it's in a very unusual district, it does sort of sit there in the, the tones and borrows from a, a lot of the tones of the, of the local area and indeed some of the patterns in, of these buildings around it, and the, the sort of tones of the mosque across, across the road. So the final piece I wanted to talk about was the, the veil element. Um, this is up on the sculpture terrace, and we went through a lot of work and development about this particularly challenging piece around how we could um, create a, a sort of free, freestanding structure. We, we didn't really want to see the, the substructure, so we talked about whether it could be um, ultra high performance GRC, but we actually went uh, eventually to a two layer, a two skinned approach with this zigzag uh, steel frame uh, in between, which follows the geometry of the tile. So incredibly kind of challenging and intricate piece, but the ultimate overall effect is one of um, creating a, a real translucency through the, the piece and not distracting you with the, the substructure. So they were mounted in these, uh, in these cassettes that, that uh, flowed along that upper, um, that upper facade terrace and ultimately gives that effect of, of enclosure at the, the top of the building so you're not sort of too exposed to the elements but also that visual view out and creates that outdoor room where the art can be on display um, in the open. So yeah, I'd like to finish off there and say thank you very much for the opportunity to, to present today. I look forward to speaking to some of you, to some of you later. And yeah, this is uh, Arta by Grimshaw. Thank you.